Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create a vector-based G3 character using an SVG editor. In this tutorial we'll be using Adobe Illustrator. You can find the G3 character templates for PSD and vector resources from the website here. There's also a link in the description. Here we're going to download the vector template which is a zip file that contains a number of different elements we'll explore a little bit later. You may also want to check out the Reillusion Wiki and white paper for the vector template workflow which provides more detailed documentation to accompany this tutorial. When you extract the zip file, you'll find multiple SVG templates for Illustrator, CorelDRAW, Inkscape, Photopea, and Affinity Designer. Each will have a human and non-human template, and the human templates include a front and side profile for both bone and sprite hands. If you're not familiar with the difference here, please refer to the white paper. The non-human folder contains a quadruped, spine, and wing template which are explored in other tutorials. Let's start off by opening up Illustrator to take a look at our character structure and replacing the various sprites. Here I'm using a front-facing profile with sprite hands. You'll notice a number of different layers here. The main ones to know are RL Bone Human, which contains the joint markers that determine where your body parts will rotate and bend. Then there's RL Bone Head, which is the same thing, only this determines where the facial features are located. RL Images is the largest group and it contains the sprites for both the body and face. Our first step here is to replace the template project sprites with the ones we prepared in this separate project. So let's go ahead and copy the entire group called male with all of its subgroups and paste them on top of the dummy in the template project. We'll then want to reposition and resize it to match the relative dimensions of our dummy. The most important joint markers to align to are the red ones on the torso. Be aware that if your custom character has radically different proportions that you'll need to reposition all of the joint markers as well. Since our character's proportions are relatively similar to the dummy, we're just going to hide the RL bone groups for now and focus on replacing the sprite images. You can see that the naming conventions of our custom character versus the template dummy are slightly different, which isn't a problem, however it makes things a bit simpler if you use the exact same names and group structure. Essentially, the next step is dragging the images from your custom character groups to their respective groups on the dummy template character. Please ensure that you don't change the layer group name on the dummy template, otherwise it won't be recognized upon import. For example, I'll drag the R foot from my custom character to the R foot colon layer group and simply hide the original since Illustrator won't export hidden layers. I'll do the same thing for the R shank which represents the lower leg sprite. Don't worry if you initially drop it into the incorrect group, you can just drag it once again to the right one. From there, simply repeat the process for all of the individual body sprites. Sprite-based hands contain a big library of hand sprites that are used to represent different hand gestures when animated. You can have as many of these as you want, but in this case we only have two, so I'll drag those into their respective groups and then hide all of the other extraneous ones. Once you have all of the body sprays replaced, you'll want to ensure that the layer order makes sense. In this case, I'm slightly rearranging the layers to have the head and hip in front of the arms. There are certain cases, depending on your artistic style, where you may want to modify this slightly, but as the rule of thumb, you'll want to have the head as the top layer group, followed by the forearms and hands, and then the hip sprite. Once that's in order, let's move on to the facial sprite image replacement. You'll find all of the facial sprite features listed under the RL image head layer group, which again should be on top of all the other body layers. You can see here that I'm simply replacing the dummy template sprites with my custom ones, just like we did with the body. There is a rings layer group for earrings or similar accessories which you can hide if your character doesn't have any. You'll find another large library of sprites in the mouth subgroup, 
that are used for lip sync and facial expressions. You'll need to replace these all according to the dummy template in order to be able to take advantage of automatic lip sync and facial animation tools like Face Puppet. The eye sprite group is also a bit more complex. It contains an iris, eye white, and mask layer. Each work together to allow for a moving pupil that doesn't exit the border of the actual eye sprite. You can learn more about this in the white paper or detailed tutorials focusing on the eyes. Essentially, the mask dictates the border of where the pupils can move within the base eye white sprite. There are also six different eye white sprite layers for a fully functional and expressive eye. Finally, the nose also has three layers in order to accommodate head rotation. Here, I'm only going to use a single one. Okay, now that we've replaced all of the sprite layers, let's focus on getting the correct bone positioning, which is essential for proper movement. Again, you'll want to refer to the white paper for the ideal bone joint marker positioning. These markers define the rotation point for their respective sprites, and with our current custom character, they are relatively similar to the dummy template character, so we can slightly tweak the positioning. If your character is fully symmetrical on both sides, you can multi-select markers and move them simultaneously to make things a bit quicker. Again, be aware that characters with significant differences in proportion will require bigger adjustments. Once the body bone markers are defined, then you will also need to set up the facial markers. These define where each individual facial feature like the eyes, nose, mouth, etc. are anchored on the face. Regardless of what the mouth and nose positioning looks like for your unique character, you'll want to ensure that the major red markers are centered on the character's head sprite. Okay, that's all the tough stuff taken care of. Let's finally move on to the export settings. These can be different depending on the SVG tool that you use, so please consult the white paper for your preferred software. In Illustrator, we're going to make sure that only the relevant three layer groups are visible, and then go up to Export As and choose SVG Format. Once the export is finished, you can simply click and drag your SVG file directly into Cartoon Animator 5, which will automatically enter into Composer mode. You can preview the sprite movement and rotation results here, and enter into the Sprite Editor to confirm that all of the sprite layers for features like the hands and mouth have imported in successfully. A common error that you might make is to not label the sprite image appropriately when replacing the template sprites. In this case, I have two eyebrows that look quite different, and that's because I didn't name the custom eyebrow properly when replacing the template one. Back in Illustrator, I'll fix the issue by renaming the eyebrow image as normal colon. When I re-export and then bring it back into Cartoon Animator, you'll notice now that we only have a single eyebrow sprite labeled properly. Lastly, you'll want to preview your bone rotation to ensure that there are no errors. In this case, our elbow marker for the lower arm could be repositioned slightly. To do that in CTA, just go over to the bone editor and select the marker itself to move it into position. If you move a parent marker like this, all of the submarkers will also move. To avoid this, you can use the E hotkey to ensure that you only move the marker that you have selected. Do this for all of the markers for ideal results. Once you're finished, you can throw on some animations to test. Finally, if you want your character to have full 360 head rotation, you're going to need a couple of additional sprites for the nose to accommodate the angle changes. You'll notice here that we have a second nose angle sprite for when the character's head rotates to the side. In the 360 head creator, this will automatically be input onto your character's facial sprite library for the nose. 
However, you will still likely need to tweak its position, scale, rotation, along with the other facial features to get the ideal result. Once that's set, then you're all done. Now you have a fully functional, vector-based character that is compatible with all of the body and facial motion tools. It may take a bit of time, but it's worth it. Thanks for watching guys, and please check out our other courses for more details on the specific parts of character creation. I'll see you in the next video.